So this right here is supposedly the world's fastest gaming mouse, the Razer Viper 8K. And now that I finally have the right equipment on hand, that is something that we can actually put to the test. So of course the big question then, 8,000 Hertz, optical switches, does that stuff actually make a difference to your gaming experience? Or is it just complete marketing BS? Because I'll be honest, a lot of the marketing material and quotes coming from Razer about the Viper 8K do look a little bit sus. Now we will get to the other important stuff too, like the shape, the cable, the glides, and whether this will just feel good in the hand in the first place. But let's just start off with the main event, which is of course the speed. 8,000 Hertz makes the polling rate on the Razer Viper eight times faster than what you'll find on any other gaming mouse today. With 8,000 Hertz, the rate at which the mouse is sampling information is almost instantaneous with one sample every 0.125 milliseconds. But let's be real here, with an input lag reduction of just 0.875 milliseconds over your normal 1,000 Hertz polling rate, how could any difference that small actually have an impact? Well, to give you an idea of what this looks like if you play on a 240 Hertz monitor, 8,000 Hertz gives you 33 samples of the mouse with every frame refresh, whereas 1,000 Hertz only gives you four. So theoretically, at least 8,000 Hertz will give you a more accurate and responsive mouse input since this information is a bit more up to date. One way that Razer says that this can be demonstrated is simply by moving around the cursor on your desktop. Supposedly with an 8,000 Hertz polling rate, since the information is a lot more up to date, there won't be any inconsistency in the cursor trail, which apparently you can see at 1,000 Hertz. Honestly, this sounds like complete marketing BS. So I filmed some slow motion footage of what this looks like on a 360 hertz display and surprisingly 8000 hertz is visibly more consistent as we can see here the gaps between the cursor trail are pretty much flawless with 8000 hertz whereas 1000 hertz the trail is sometimes a bit inconsistent this is admittedly pretty hard to see in real time and without slowing down the footage 8000 and 1000 hertz look pretty much the same but at 500 hertz you can definitely see the inconsistencies and in cursor skipping on a 360 hertz display Display. So if you apply this to gaming, this should mean that 8000 Hz will give you a slightly smoother input and tracking, since what is being rendered on your screen after all is controlled by the input and movement of your mouse. Now the other side of this 8000 Hz polling rate is the lower input lag that you get from that faster signal. The speed up from 1000 Hz as we saw is about 1 millisecond per sample, and as we can see that's about the improvement in input lag that we get when we're talking about sensor latency. So at an improvement of 1 milliseconds over 1000 Hz, that's not what you'd call game changing by any means, and it's not even close to what you or I could perceive. The main benefit here seems to be a more accurate and smoother input, which again, slim chance you're actually going to notice that in game, but as we saw, the improvement does exist. So how does this stack up then against other gaming mice? Well, at 8000 Hz, the Razer Viper 8K does have the fastest sensor input lag that I've measured, and although we're measuring the time it takes for the sensor to move from a stand still and just measure the initial movement, this would carry over to really whenever the mouse is moving and changing direction as well. Again though, there's not a huge difference here to take note of over something like a G Pro X Superlite, only around two milliseconds. The next thing that I wanna talk about here are the optical switches. This is something that I personally thought was pure marketing hype when Razer first announced them with the original Viper gaming mouse until I actually tested them against other mice which use regular mechanical switches. With Razer's optical switch design, there's no need to account for the bouncing effect that's created from a mechanical switch when it's pressed, which if unaccounted for, can result in multiple switch actuations being registered. If you've ever had a gaming mouse that had a double clicking fault, this is basically why that happens. So to solve this, mouse manufacturers implement what's called a debounce delay, and as a consequence, this does increase input lag. So an optical switch here plus 8000 Hz polling rate, that should give us some crazy low input lag, right? Well, not exactly. In fact, oddly enough, it looks like the polling rate for the switches is locked, as even lowering it to 125 hertz, I measured no difference in click to display latency at all. There we should see a difference of at least eight milliseconds, which should be pretty obvious and really stand out in this chart here. But as we can see, we get pretty much the same result across the board. Whether it's locked
clock to 1000 hertz or 8000 hertz i have no idea but for what it's worth the razer viper 8k does give us the lowest click latency of any gaming mouse that i've measured in the end the optical switch advantage gives us a three millisecond faster input compared to something like a g pro super light so yeah we can measure a difference here from the 8000 hertz and the optical switches but there is a darker side to the 8000 hertz polling rate and that's that not every game in your steam library will actually support it thankfully though this has improved since the Viper 8K first launched and the only two games that I came across that didn't play nice with the 8000 hertz polling rate was Apex Legends and Kovacs Aim Trainer. In these games, fast mouse movement, for example if you really quickly flick your mouse to the left or the right, that would cause huge FPS stutter and frame lag which can only really be fixed by lowering the polling rate. Not really sure why this is but it seems to be a game engine limitation, not really a fault of Razer or say Windows 10. Otherwise Valorant, CSGO, Overwatch, Doom Eternal, they all played flawlessly with 8000 hertz, no frame stutter, lag or FPS drops during really fast movement. So there is a difference here, the Viper 8K is the fastest gaming mouse that you can buy right now, but should you buy it? Well firstly let's tackle the big question, will the 8000 hertz polling rate actually make you better in game? Personally I would say that the smoother input and lower input lag is extremely difficult to notice in game, especially when you're focusing on your own aim and positioning and what the enemy's next move is going to be. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't welcome these upgrades. If we have faster tech and settings available to us that potentially can improve our gameplay, then why not take advantage of that? If you had the choice on your own gaming mouse right now to choose 1000 hertz or 8000 hertz, obviously you would choose 8000 hertz. The benefits of that speed up though are not enough for me to just outright recommend this to every PC gamer in the world. It's not that fast. And unfortunately for the Viper 8K, most gaming mice today are fast enough. It really comes down to whether you enjoy the shape of the Razer Viper and if you're okay playing with the cable compared to wireless. After all, there's no point of having that lower input lag and smoother input if you're not hitting your shots in the first place. If you're not comfortable with the Viper shape, personally I find it a little bit flat, then it doesn't matter if you're playing at 8000 hertz or 1000 hertz or 20,000 hertz, you'd be far better off with a shape that fits your hand size and grip preference better. And that still today I think is the most important factor in choosing the right gaming mouse for you, choosing the right shape and size that's going to feel really natural in your hand. However, you do have to give a big props to Razer, I mean they are really pushing the tech in their gaming mice forward uh, compared to a lot of the other vendors out there which are sticking with mechanical switches and you know are not doing 8000 hertz not even experimenting with it so to see that technology here and to see that it does actually make a measurable impact that is pretty cool to see so big thumbs up to them i'm personally really interested to see what they do next you know if they are able to implement 8000 hertz with a wireless mouse that would be pretty cool to see and if you do have the viper 8k i would love to know how your experience has been with it down below otherwise a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.